Hello, fellow Rosarians. I hope that you've been trying to propagate over the winter to keep yourself busy like me. Look at this baby. I am so tickled that I have finally had moderate success. I'm still not at 100% and I'm tweaking some things and I thought that it would help you if you're at this point and you're having some issues. One of the things that I have encountered, pest. And the frustrating part for me is as I've been reaching out to all of my growers and asking for some advice and saying, what do I do about soil gnats? They said, soil gnats? We're not experiencing that. And I was like, wait, why is it just me? So I've had to come up with some solutions on my own that I think that might help you. So I have soil gnats because, surprise, surprise, my soil is too moist. It's definitely something that I've been trying to tweak and figure out how to give the rows just enough moisture, but not too much. So one of the things that I found initially on was that my roses, they had rooted and I put them, I potted them up, but they weren't taking up moisture. So for three weeks, I didn't have to water at all. And so that clued me in that I had a ventilation issue. And so when I reached out to Dawn from Reverence from Roses and said, hey, you know, I need to tweak some things here. How often are your fans coming on? And his fans are timed with the humidity and they're automatic. Uh, but basically, I figured to do what he's doing once a day, I need to turn on a fan. And so I just set up a box fan here in the garage far away because it was just, you know, we've got 10 degrees outside. The overall temperature in the garage is 50 degrees. And I just worried about, you know, that wind <laughs> um, hurting my plants when it's this cold. So I set the fan um, probably 25 feet away, 30 feet away on the lowest setting just so that there was some gentle flow. That solved a problem. You want your roses to be taking in every two days wanting water. I'm actually to the point now where the root roots are growing so much that they want to be watered almost every day. But having them dry down in between waterings is a great thing. That also helps with soil gnats, which I experienced. And you'll see soil gnats, um, and they will actually be, they look like gnats, but they're actually walking along the soil. And when I was combating these soil gnats, um, if you were to come close to the plants, and sometimes if I shake them a little bit, I can still see them. I mean, there was like a swarm of gnats. And I was trying to figure out what to do. So let me tell you what did not work for me. So I initially tried the, I'm going to mispronounce this, diatomaceous earth. So I tried this and, you know, they say that, you know, if you put this on the soil, you know, sprinkle it in. And in fact, they have a tool that you can use to spray um, and gives a little puff of air with the powder onto the soil. The problem is, because I had too much humidity, it was constantly caked up, and it just looked like a hot mess. So I do not recommend this. Um, it just didn't work for me. What I tried next are the sticky traps. And you guys, they're gross. Um, <laughs> but they work. So it comes like this, lots of different shapes. And they're so inexpensive on Amazon. I don't know. It's like, you know, $8 maybe for, is this 25 in here so pretty inexpensive and you peel off the sticky part at the top and this just sticks into the soil so let me show you what you're left with look at this disgusting <laughs> sticky mess of bugs uh, it's awful but it's a solution and it definitely works so you know it it traps the bugs to this um, sticky until it dies and it, they're attracted by the yellow and so I change that out whenever I get tired of looking at it. The next thing that I tried with a little bit of success is the mosquito bits and you make a tea with this. It has directions on the back for the, um, uh, the gnat control. You do four tablespoons per gallon of this and you're going to let it soak and I it says soak for 30 minutes. I usually soak it a little bit longer than that 
and then you strain off the bits that will be floating at the top, and then you put a little bit of that into the soil. Well, because I already have so much moisture, and I'm worried about rotting of the stem, I found um, a dropper, and I would suck it up into the dropper, and then just put a little bit into the top of each plant. That seemed to work, so I had some success with that. Um, and then the next thing that I want to show you is um, you can make traps for the gnats. If you live in the country like I do, every summer we have a couple of weeks where we've got fruit flies. I don't even have fruit on the counter, but I end up with fruit flies. <laughs> so you come up with a solution and I'll go ahead and show you how to make this. So what we're gonna do, really easy. I like apple cider vinegar because that's what I always have on hand and the bugs seem to like it. If you don't have apple cider vinegar, then you could use beer or wine and then just use a drop of soap. It could be dish soap, any kind of liquid soap. And that gives them, um, that makes it so that they can't get out. It's too slippery. Give it just a little bit of a shake and then I like the press and seal. Um, if you don't have press and seal saran wrap, then you just need to put tape or rubber band around it to hold it. But in this case, it will stick to the cup for me. And then take a, um, a knife, a fork, something to make little holes. And there you go. The gnats will go into the hole and get stuck down in here. So that is one organic solution for you. So I place those around, um, and so I have one on each tray. That's helped too. Soil gnats will nibble on the roots, and that's why it's detrimental to a plant. So you want to get on those as quickly as possible, and they replicate very quickly. So the other issue that I haven't shared with you that I've been having is aphids. Well, that's something that we experience during the growing season outside, and I don't really stress about it anymore with aphids because they're only there really for about a month, and then the beneficials come in and take care of them for me. So, but here in the garage, I don't have any beneficials to take care of it. So we're gonna circle back to that solution that I shared with you at the beginning of last season, an organic way to take care of aphids if you're not a squisher and you don't feel like just, you know, squishing them off with your hands. So I use a tire inflator and it is a burst of air. <laughs> And because the aphids are so soft-bodied, I can't. It'll kill them, you know, as soon as the air hits it and it pushes them off of the rows. So what I do is I just put my hand behind it, and that will take care of the aphids. So I come out, you know, every day or so and just take a look and make sure that I don't have a huge population of aphids. But that's something else that you might encounter. So. You'll see that everything that I'm doing here, I'm trying to limit adding additional moisture to the soil with any ingredients that I don't have to. And I'm trying not to spray the leaves themselves because they're under the light uh, most of the day and I don't want to um, burn the leaves. So while I come out here every day, I am still finding roses that have rooted. It's very sad. Um, they've rooted and then they still end up dying. And when I reached out to one of my grower friends and said, oh my goodness, you know, why is this still happening? They said, this is just a part of growing roses. Just take it out of the soil as quickly as possible if you have other roses in that uh, same pot and move on and just accept that as part of the growing process. So since then, where am I? My boxwoods are doing outstanding and uh, I have dwindled down in roses, but I still have a lot of successes. And it's really fun to see some of the roses getting ready to bloom already here in the garage. The boxwoods are doing really well. And you can see the roots here are starting to fill the pot. So I need to consider potting them up and I'm just allowing the roots to fill um, the entire cup before I do that. Uh, but they are happy and I'm giving them uh, fertilizer diluted once a week. I, I don't think I've lost any of the boxwoods yet. 
Uh, this is it for the rest of my rose cuttings. And so I have some that are just looking fabulous. Some that are teeny tiny small, uh, but they're doing well. But it's really fun when you look at something like this. This is Wenlock and you realize that this was one stem and it has already had a basal break and is growing more into what we expect. Some that are much slower um, to uh, leaf out, but this one is getting ready to leaf out. And I still have some that I'm watching here um, where I have multiple roses in one container and it's just because I'm lazy <laughs> right now and I don't feel like potting it up. I'm just kind of letting them do their thing. And when it's time, I will gently um, tease these roots out and put them in their own individual containers. But you can see here, I've got or eight, uh, nine roses in one pot and they're happy. So I hope this video is helpful. If you've been trying to propagate have you been successful without using a misting system? If there anything that if there's anything that you're doing that I'm not, please post that down below. And if you've been tackling pests, let me know what organic solutions you have, or if you couldn't go organic, what you had to use to fix your pest problem. So thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.